Today we're in Greenville Springs, Louisiana, visiting St. Alphonsus Parish. Although this has been a parish since 1962, it was actually one of the first ones that was made a parish by um, Bishop Tracy when we became a diocese. But the faith life here goes back to the 1800s. Of course, it wasn't known as St. Alphonsus in those days. It was known as St. Francis of Assisi Chapel. And it was a mission of quite a few parishes before it came into its own in 1962. So being that St. Joseph, what we know as the cathedral, was the only church that existed, Catholic church that existed in Baton Rouge for over 100 years, it was a mission of St. Joseph with um, the priest coming by horse and buggy out here once a month to say mass. Then in 1908, St. George is carved out of St. Joseph, and several missions that were in the outlying areas of East Baton Rouge Parish were then attached to St. George. And it stayed with St. George until 1920. In 1920, St. Anthony becomes a parish on the northern part of um, Baton Rouge, the northern part of the city. And being this is in the northeastern section, it's attached to St. Anthony. So from 1920 to 1944, it was a mission of that parish. And then in 1944, St. Jared Magella was established as a parish being run by the Redemptorist Order. At that time, St. St. Francis of Assisi here, is then that was its last um, mission was under St. Jared. In 1962, it becomes its own parish, but then it's given the name St. Alphonsus, and it's still run at that point in time by the Redemptorist Order until the 1980s when it became a diocesan parish. The other thing that is very, very interesting in this parish, and one of the unusual things of the ones that we have visited, is the unusual, unusual and different artwork that exists here at St. Alphonsus. Behind us is a beautiful mosaic that's done, and then we also have some gorgeous stained glass windows that are very different. But one of the, the highlight really to me is that a local man, a parishioner here, a longtime parishioner here, who is a wood carver, actually did a, a lot of the artwork in both the parish office and in the church here. Um, and his name is Mr. Alan Crochet, and it, it's a wood relief and then it's painted. So in the parish office, they have a beautiful one that he's done of the interior of this church very early on when it was built. Um, he's also done uh, the Last Supper and quite a few um, other pieces, statuary that we'll be talking about as today's show goes on. Um, with the Stations of the Cross, he actually built the framework for them. Another artist that is exhibited here, we do have some Hayden pieces. The Stations of the Cross that are in their daily chapel were done by Frank Hayden. So it's a, it's a beautiful, eclectic um, group of artwork that really works well in here, and it's beautiful. Um, so this is a parish that we'll explore in detail, and it's different from some of the others that you've seen. So join us today here at St. Alphonsus. I have as my guest today, Father Mike Maroney, um, pastor here at St. Alphonsus. Welcome to the show. Thank you, honey. Appreciate okay. being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been here at St. Alphonsus? I've just completed my, well, 12 and a half years. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm on my 13th year, and uh, I'm past retirement at this point <laughs> in my life, so still working. Uh, of course, I'm native of Ireland, was born and raised in Ireland. I've been here over 48 years almost. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And, uh, I'm a U.S. citizen for a long time, and uh, I have been in great places. I've never been too far in an assignment. Uh, my first assignment was in New Roads, and then I came from there to St. Charles, which is closed. Mm -hmm. Then I went to St. Isidore, then I went to Our Lady Mercy, Thomas Moore, and back up this way. Very good. So pretty much you've mapped <laughs> yeah. out yeah. mapped out our diocese. <laughs> yes. So very happy. It's been great, great years. That's great. This parish here is so, um, so interesting in its early history. Mm -hmm. This is one of, uh, that we see where there was a name change as well as it's been, um, it started out a long time ago in the 1800s, 18, 1880s. 1890, well, 18, 1998, actually. 98 is officially when the chapel was right. built and it was given a name. But um, when I was researching it, I found that mass was actually started by, in a school yes. off of Frenchtown Road, right. a lady that wanted mass to be able to be set out here. And Neither. parishioners would go fetch yeah. the priest from yeah. St. Joseph's she was to Amelia come Landry was her name and she was a teacher by profession, but taught music and art as well, and taught religion classes. And mm -hmm. she uh, encouraged the people to raise money to build a church. And they went to St. Helena Parish, where they brought all the pine wood from St. Helena and, and built it. And um, then, of course, it was a mission of 
at that time of St. Uh, George's Cathedral, mm -hmm. then St. George, then St. Anthony, and then it became a mission of uh, Redemptus when the Redemptus Parish was opened, and finally it became its own parish in 1962. Mm -hmm. And that was the first pass that was fought our Greenwall. <laughs> yeah, Greenwall, yeah. Because it's just was. like the town. Greenwall, I was in, yeah, that was interesting little and side note. I'm the, the ninth I'm the ninth pastor. The ninth one. That's yeah, great. Right. So. And one of the things about that, when we talk about, he was talking about, you know, the different, different parishes that it was a mission of. And the reason for that is that when a new one would be carved out of the old one, the new one was a little bit closer and it would right. get attached to it. Right. So um, that is why it, it, it wasn't just being passed around right. town. It, as a new parish okay. would develop, that's when it, it came to the, it. We have the statue of St. Alphonsus and St. Francis outside in the front. Right, because people don't realize, too, it carried yeah. the name St. Francis of Assisi. Right. All yeah. those years, 60-something right. years. Right. And then when it was made a parish, and this was one of the first parishes that was established when Bishop Tracy, Bishop Tracy. so we became a diocese right. like in 1962. So at that point in time, and they had built a new church in 52, right. somewhere in that Some time frame, right? somewhere there in the 50s um, already. So then it becomes a parish in its own right, and they named it St. Alphonsus. And that's interesting, too, because it was the Redemptorist Order that was here. Was here right. And St. Alphonsus is the founder of the Redemptorist right. Order. And so, the church that was built in the 50s is still here as part of the school now. Is it? Awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so we'll there. talk about that when we get to the school. Yeah. So I didn't realize they hadn't torn it down. No, it's it's administration part of the school. And that church lasted actually from the 50s yeah, so up until, until 70, 78, 78, 78, 78, so 78, when this yeah, one was built, yeah. that this is the one that it was, was built, built in 78, right? by Father Pline in 78, yeah. Very good. And, uh, that's, um, and we have some uh, parts of the other churches here, and that's why we're going to talk a little bit about that. Good. This building having been done you know, built in 1978, though over the years there's been, been changes or some, what's new and what's not uh, and what is original to the church. Most of the church from 1978 is still, this area here has been expanded right behind Steve here. And the uh, sanctuary is the same. Uh, the pipe organ was installed at about the same time. And um, there's some artwork in here. Uh, there's uh, over the, by the pipe organ, there's a handcrafted uh, uh, picture of the Last Supper done uh -huh. by Alan Crochet, oh, wow. who did okay. quite. A, I have some other plate pieces to show. You. He does it with his pocket knife. It's wood. It's wood, all oh, wood. Wow. And so it's like a wood relief. Yeah, right. And the Stations of the Cross are from St. Charles Borromeo. Okay. Were, when the church was closed, we bought the Stations of the Cross off of St. Jared, mm -hmm. who had it. And the bell tower bell is also from St. Charles Borromeo. Okay. Is the original bell still here, by chance? It, it is. It's Some, out there. Oh, okay. There, because yeah. I read, when I was reading, they said for y'all's centennial 100-year yeah, anniversary in 98, right. y'all rang the original That's bell. So hand I figured, bell, hand bell. Oh, okay. Hand bell. <laughs> it's Interesting. Out, it's out there. Very good. And um, there was, there's no baptistry in the church, as, as in the interest of just the Holy Water Fund. When they renovated, they didn't put a baptistry in. That mm -hmm. was back in about 14, 15 years ago, maybe now. Okay. I wasn't here at the time. So um, the other pieces of stuff in the church is there's some uh, stations of the cross right here in the daily chapel done by Frank Hayden. Oh, wow. Some woodwork okay. right, right behind this wall here. And uh, what else is here? This is one of Alan Croce's things that he did with his pocket knife right here. Mm -hmm. It's not... Um, he got out of some piece of cypress from down the river somewhere and do it with a pocket knife. It scares the kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. When, when they built this church, did they bring anything from the old church that incorporated the, in here? From, uh, uh, if, yeah. if, I was just curious. No, no not really. Not, not the tabernacle really, so. is a new tabernacle. It was designed by Frank Hayden as well. Oh, really? The tabernacle? The tabernacle okay. matched. The, uh, when we brought the stations across from St. Charles, we put, they're very small they're in here in this daily chapel. So. Now, in terms of seating capacity, what's the capacity of the church about? It's, it, yeah. it can, with standing room, it's right at about 900. Okay, yeah. okay. And that's been able, because this area is booming. Oh, well, it, you know, are, Christmas time is way down the hall there. That's true of most places. That's not uncommon, but, yeah, right. Yeah. But, I mean, for the most part, y'all are... We're right at about, um, all registered families, a little over 2,700. Okay. Actual people on our roll, it rolls about 3,300. Mm -hmm. so. Very good. When this became a chapel, when it became a mission of St. Joseph in the 1800s, as right. we were talking about, right. it was based on a school that was in the area. Yes, right. And so, I mean, the Redemptorists, when they 
when it became a parish, they immediately started a started school, school, correct? Yeah, right. So that was in the 60s, and that's I think they started with like first through fourth grade. Yeah, so tell like us a little that. bit about the school that's well, here. Well, the school has had its valleys and peaks. Sure. Um, when, uh, when I came here uh, 12 years ago, <clears throat> we were down to about 330 students because central school system just had opened. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And that was a challenge for us, and we're back up to around 460 now. Okay. And we have preschool, pre-K to, uh, not pre-K, but preschool to eighth grade. And it was a time the school had about 700 kids. When oh, I was large, When yeah. I was doing guidance counseling at Redemptus High School, we used to have about, we'd get about 70 students a year from here. But yeah, what course. happened then was that the bus, Central opened its own school, Zachary did, mm -hmm. Baton Rouge, and Baker. So we had no busing, had no busing to Redemptus. That, oh, that's that hurt Redemptus School tremendously because all the par civil parishes uh, were yeah, not busing outside the of their lines. When I was in Redemptus High School, this was all just East Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And they, exactly. all, they all went to school there. The school today, we've got very good staff. Um, I think they got a good school. And uh, we did build a middle school, got away with the T buildings some years back. And now that was done under your administration, it correct? Was, yeah, right. The middle school, and right. It's, it's doing well. We, you know, we'd like to have more enrollment, but Catholic schools are having little challenges these days all over the diocese. That's it. So, um, how many classes of each do you know? Two. We have you have two, two of two every yeah. one. That's Except a good the size. preschool, we got three in the preschool. That's a big thing nowadays. Every 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 church I've visited, they either have a preschool or they're starting one, one or yeah. have several. And that's, I think that's a big need in the big community need too. Hopefully, you can keep them because here in Central, we we get them for the preschool because sometimes it's cheaper to send them to preschool than it's to do a big daycare. Exactly. But that, right now, that's stabilized, and our preschool kids are staying with us. So we hope for that to be good for the future. Okay. In terms of, is, it's a totally lay um, yeah. oh, staff? Yes. No, the sisters Because at one here. time, there were sisters no, here, but I think... They left in 1971, actually. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize They were the Notre Dame back. sisters. Mm -hmm. They left in 1971. They were the same sisters that taught at St. Jared. Okay. And actually in St. Teresa and Gonzales, I think, as well. The same order. We were talking about the, the parts of the school, and you right. said it was T buildings, and then you came right. in and built this middle school. Right. Right. So the layout here, the school is directly behind the church? Church is directly and behind the church. And when these, this place here was expanded, the offices were built right down the hall here, and there's a meeting room and conference rooms on the left. Mm -hmm. That was done before I came here. I built this. I took, got rid of the T buildings, built the middle school, and we put in extra parking all out there by the football field. Okay. And the cemetery's right there as well. And um, we're long, we're landlocked here. Really? How big is, how many acres, how big is it? We have no place to build on our property. Right, right but right. how big is the complex, do you know even? I'd say about 20 acres. About maybe. 20 acres, and so yeah. you're at capacity, we're capacity. for this yeah. space. We just correct? bought four acres across from the rectory about two months ago. Okay. And uh, we're looking at our property. Hopefully, we can get, we don't know. But we can't, we can't build anything more on this campus, really. It's too tight. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, one of the things you said I want to go back to real quick, right. and that involves still the campus that we're talking right. about. But when we, I used to come with my kids 30 years ago to Mass here, I remember that this exact church was here. Right. But the administration building and some of the other buildings were not attached to it. Here, it's all one big complex. You walk in the doors and the church is on your left. Right. And Meeting. then... It starts with all of your, the rest office of the staff, campus, all, right? All, all so the office staff are here. Um, prior to this, the administration building was here in the northeast part of the property. Okay. It was a relatively new building. It was built maybe back in the late 70s or maybe 80s. They tore that down and combined the church and the administration into this part. Right, and that right. would have been like in the 90s probably. Probably in the 90s. I would have been coming here up until the I early 90s. I think it was probably so. Mons, uh, Monsignor Giot's time probably when he was here. He was the first pastor after the Redemptus left. Okay. With Bruce Monsignor Guillot, and yes, and that was in 1986 right. that the Redemptorists left this parish, right. and it became a diocesan parish run by diocesan priests. Right. Um, at that point in time, or somewhere right after he came, I know they had like meetings to determine what needs were were right. needed, and that's when some expansion started, which right. is what we're talking about now. Right. But one of the things that came, and that y'all do have, correct, is an adoration chapel. Yes, we do on the south. 
West Tiber. And I was reading on the website, it's 25 years this, this December. This year, December, December that, the 8th, actually. Yes, because so many parishes can't sustain them. Right. Is it 24 hour? We have a keypad. You can, it's really open 24, but you, if you're a regular adorer, you get a code. Mm -hmm. You have the code and you can go back and forth. So okay. Usually it locks down automatically from about 6 o'clock in the evening till 6 in the morning. It locks, but okay. then you can use the code and key. It's, it's struggling a little bit, you know, the late hours. Yes, but, but it's still the fact that it's... It's, it's, it's very, nice that's awesome. very nice. That's awesome. I thought it was excellent that it was 25 years 25 in existence years ago, the, because the, so many of them next, uh, don't have that. I'll that was one on of the things. Next weekend. Yes. But we, we can celebrate it because we have... Remembering our children coming up next weekend. We okay. do a program for all the people that lost children here. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. One of the other things you mentioned in the back of my mind, it's rolling here. Y'all do have a cemetery here, correct? We do, very old, yes. Okay. Most, no space is left. Oh, really? And that, is that what you've purchased additional land for, is to, to continue a cemetery? Or no, you're just going to leave it we as just, it is now? We have now? to work around that. We can't do anything with it. We couldn't, you know, it's some of them going back to the very 18. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes with it being yeah. this property was right. purchased Probably. in the 1898 or donated. And it was just put in the wrong place, really. That's okay. what happened, but then they didn't. So do y'all have plans? Where will people be buried, I guess I should say? Because I know in Baton Rouge you only yeah. have certain areas, but We've, you're in the country, kind of. No, well, we're, we're not going to expand it, plus we don't have the space to expand it. And plus, cemetery is becoming very complicated to mm -hmm. manage. They are. So we're not, we're not going in that direction. Right, no, but I mean, there's other area. There's, what I'm saying is, I guess there's places in this area no, if people want to be Most people here are buried either at um, Green Oaks, Rest Haven, or okay, Rose so Lawn. right into town, but I guess. All, with the, they all have plots in that. with the throughway, with yeah, the central yeah. throughway, it puts you closer there's to no, all of those places. There really is no cemeteries out here. See okay. the funeral home opened just a few years back. They didn't build a cemetery either out with their place. When did y'all reach capacity? Has it been several years? Oh, we, uh, I was well, just since I've come here, we we sold about we had a small sp section, and we sold spots for cremains. Okay. I think there was about a hundred of those. Out okay. There, yeah. When I was researching on your website to prepare for this show, I was fascinated with all the different ministries, the outreach, the different things that y'all have, programs you have here. Right. Tell us some of your favorites. Well, they're all favorites. <laughs> I worded <laughs> that wrong. Tell us about the, some the of the unusual them, well, or I th active I think ones. that uh, yeah. the, the, we have a, one of our great things out here is our very large food bank. We have, we have a <clears throat> tremendous food bank right across the street in French Town Road. Okay, great. Uh, we feed thousands of people out of that every year, run by St. Vincent de Paul, very mm -hmm. active. Great support for St. Vincent de Paul out here. We have a lot of formation going on from all ages. 14 Bible studies, I believe, going on for all ages. Wow, 14? Uh, yeah. yeah, and then we have, we have what they call the King's Men. It's a group of men that do have a little a study group that they come. They're recent. And all the other ministers, the formation ministers, of course, so you, the youth are very very, very um, uh, broad in what they tried to do here. And um, the um, prime timers of the, the group that the elderly people, they, oh, okay. they go dancing, they go to trips, <laughs> they, they do all their own things. But they're very active and they, it's very good for our seniors. And um, then we have, um, you know, we got, um, we got a good music ministry here. We got a uh, very good uh, adult choir. They're very, 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 very good good youth choir, and uh, we have um, kind of something for everybody to fit I in. I saw that. <laughs> um, we, um, we have the program Formed, which is a, an app. It's taken off very, very well here. We're, I think the last time there was almost 800 had signed up on that program, right. especially for the Advent. We're using it to promote Advent mm -hmm. and so on. We've got a very good the core ministry that always taking care of the church and, and things like that, and uh, our altar society, very strong. And um, our ministries and church, the readers, lectors, and so on, we have a fantastic group that are very faithful in that and very great. We have so many people. Actually, our Eucharist minister schedule is sometimes you don't meet, come back on for a number of weeks because it's so large. There's so oh, wow, many that's great. It's good. One of the, there were a couple of them that really caught my attention okay. that, that were interesting to me. Um, and that is that the 
people out here you seem to know a lot that involve food and drinking and oh, ministry yeah. all in one, like um, theology on tap right. on yeah. Sunday evenings yeah, that's going with, a, well. with a meal. Right, and right. then there was a ladies' group also that meets um, in the morning the coffee, sometimes. Coffee. The coffee, oh, co- that was right. it, the coffee, coffee club break. or coffee yeah. break. Yeah. Um, and then one of the most fascinating that my mother, I have to tell my mom about this, see if they have it in, in other parishes too, but there's one for senior citizens with, they actually say the rosary while they're doing exercise. Yes. Which That's is so soul I have something. Not come across yeah. that yet here. Soul, <laughs> yeah, soul that. core, uh, soul core, yes, right. along that yeah, line, which is really myself. fascinating. When, oh, yeah. And that's what when I would, for being you know outside of the city limits and looking at your website, the the amount of involvement or opportunities for involvement here in this parish mm-hmm. is really amazing and diverse, right. um, and, and really interesting. We have a very large festival uh, called Festival of Two uh-huh. Rivers, broken into two parts. We do our auction coming up right after Christmas. And the festival itself is in first weekend and last weekend in April or first weekend in May, depending. Okay, so it's they're very at the same su- time. Very successful. We events. split it between the church and school. It, it grows to about 400,000 a year. Wow. So it's very successful. Began that when I came here. But this coming weekend on Sunday night, we have a very special ministry for remembering our children. We started it 10 or 12 years ago. Joanne okay. Stein runs it. And we... We'll have three or four hundred people at that. It's a candlelight service, ecumenical in nature. You don't have to be just mm-hmm. Catholic to come. So it's very, 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 uh, you know, sad time for so many mm-hmm. people. So many, so many have lost so many. You know, the first year we had, I think we had almost about 500 people that came that night. Wow. And it's not a long service. It's music, reading, and, um, and there's no preaching in- involved in it. So. We're very proud of that. It's been very, very successful. So just a chance for yeah. people in yeah, any, that, 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 any, any walk of life, child, any, yeah. any religion that comes lost, together, yeah, ecumenical, yeah. they come well, together for this purpose. We invite purpose. everybody. And we so send out invitations mm-hmm. once we get them. It's, it's linked with the national. There's always the national remembering our children at the same time every year, right at this time of the year. Okay. And we, we began it. It's, this will be the eleventh one this year. So it's a national movement. Yeah, it is. But we, you, you, put your you, own pro, you put your own program together. Okay. That. But it's, it's good. We've been talking about all these ministries and how active the people are out here. Um, you were impacted, if I'm correct, now we're in 2019, the Great Flood of 2016. Right. What impact? What degree of flooding did you have, and how did that impact the parish? And how have y'all well, come back from that? About over, they say over 60 percent of our parishioners were impacted. Oh wow! Personally. This campus Besides. here, every every building from here to my rectory were all everything was flooded. Okay. Varying in depths of water. Uh, the church was not as severely flooded in depth wise in water, about maybe a foot. But uh, all this is new floor. This is new flooring. Okay. And in all, the church. In the church, mm-hmm. yes. And we were able to save the pews because we had replaced the pews not that many years ago. So we got them up out of the water. And we did, <clears> quickly, we yeah. Save them. The offices were all um, flooded. Uh, the school was all flooded, and um, my house. Was, my house had probably the most water, had about two and a half feet. Mm-hmm. So um, that was a very difficult time. Uh, our parishioners were wonderful. We had church, of course, in the gymnasium for quite a long while, and uh, amazing people from all over came bringing food and truckloads and stuff. Even so, though they themselves were yeah, in... Well, these were people far away Mississippi. Oh, for, oh okay, that great. Group that came from Mississippi, New Orleans. They came Outsiders with coming food in to, to feed, feed 1,000 people at the time. And they'd come on Sundays after the Masses or between mm-hmm. Masses and sit up their trucks and people could have a hot... I, was a, I think there was, out of a great tragedy, an awful lot of bonding, I think, took place. People began to realize how much um, uh, they had lost, but how much... They were blessed with two, with new friends, new family members help, helping out one another. And, and that when it was all over, it was, it was a $2.5 million wow. loss. here? Yeah. To here. Now, you said you had mass in the gymnasium. Yeah. Was that spared or that too flooded? That was it just the didn't only need... building that didn't flood. Okay. It was the only building that part of it is on the flood zone. Mm-hmm. The rest, we're not in the flood zone here. You're not We're in the not flood, in the flood zone. zone. Wow. But you're situated between the Amy yeah, River and the Comey River. Gone to the so when you get that volume of rain, yeah. was it backwater then? Y'all knew it was coming rather than the flash flooding? We didn't know it was coming. We were uh, actually... But, I mean, on, was it after the main event or was it during the... Well, it summer? rained for three full days of what it did. Mm-hmm. I had gone to somebody, some friends of mine, their water was coming close to their house, and 
we were putting up stuff and blocks and so on, and then it started going down. So I was coming home, and I, we thought, we're not going uh -huh. to Florida because I'm supposed to be in a high spot here. Right. So I came back, went to bed, and I got up in the morning. Greenwood Springs Road here had about six feet of water. Right. And That's it was coming this the way. The backwater. There were speedboats going up and down. Oh, wow. Up the road. And that rained again for another day after, after mm -hmm. that. And we were in the, we had moved into the cafeteria, but the current was so strong there, was, we couldn't walk. We had to go up on top of the second story building. Okay. We stayed up there for three days, 45 people and 20 dogs. Oh, wow. Goodness. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting. We, and, but we found ways. We had no power, of course. Mm -hmm. We had no power. Right. And we had a generator that's out there, but the water got too high. I couldn't run it. Okay. Do you remember how long it took? I mean, how long before y'all were back up and when we, the church was finished and y'all were moved we, back into we were the church? In was August, it? We were back in the church for Christmas. Okay. We were back in the school within two weeks. Okay. Good. The school, so it didn't too school much was, interrupt. School was cinder block, so they came in, pressure washed it, cleaned Great. it out, pulled up all the tiles, put them down, and painted. And it was, they had a, they had a crew of 60 people here. Wow. The contract we had was um, recommended by the Catholic Mutual. Well, I can't get a name now, but they had about 60 people here every day. We're talking about, you know, the flood and how it impacted your parish. And you have been in quite a few parishes, you right. know, around the diocese in, in all these years. Yes, right. So if you had to um, compare common congregations or, or talk about what makes this one different and this one special, tell us just a few of your thoughts on well, about I, your parish, about your congregation. This is both rural and urban in a sense. Most of the people here work in Baton Rouge. We don't have a lot of infrastructure and stuff for them to work here. Mm -hmm. The beauty of what I find here is that they're very generous. Very generous. We never had a building fund drive or anything like that. We have a second collection we do for building. It works very well. They're very hands-on uh, in that you can get them to, they're very talented with their hands as well. And uh, I've liked, loved it out here. I'd have retired some years ago if I weren't here, <laughs> I can assure you, because uh, they, don't, they don't give me many headaches, put it that way. They're very kind people. And I think that means a lot when you're serving every day, especially when you could retire, you could you know, say, I've enough. <laughs> That's <laughs> but it. I, but I like it. Well, Father, thank you for being on the show today oh, and telling welcome. us you know, about your wonderful parish here. And folks, if you have an opportunity to come and see this, this is a beautiful church. It's a beautiful campus. I know there's genealogists out there that probably would love to dig in that cemetery. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so again, thank, thank you, you for being Appreciate with us. It. Thank and you. join us again for another episode of Roots of Faith.